Welcome back to Switched to Linux. I've been recording on my laptop for like the whole week so far. I think every video has been recorded on my laptop. And we're still on the laptop. And the reason is this is the computer that I upgraded to Linux Mint 18.3. And I'm just not done with the 18.3 series yet. Um, what we're going to talk about today is how to back up your files using the backup tool to a network drive. Uh, this is one of those criticisms of the backup tool in Linux Mint is that it cannot access a network drive. Why is this important? Well, when you back up your files, it is fairly dangerous to back them up to the hard drive that uh, the computer is running on because, um, you know, if the hard drive fails, like the hard drive failed on my other video production computer, then if all your backup files are on there, I mean, you could... I don't even know. You don't want to store backups there. And the backups for this system here, after I excluded several large directories uh, that I didn't need to be backed up, um, those went, um, uh, those ones there actually was still a 14, I think it was a 14 gigabyte backup. So dropping that on my NAS was an important thing. So I'm not going to talk about how I set up my NAS. Um, I will, if I remember, link that file in so that you can actually see that. Um, uh, like I'll link the video in there where I talk about how to manage that. And basically I just created a folder specific to that particular NAS and then you need a password. So I just wrote down my username and password here while I am working on that. And what you need to do to pull this off is you need to mount that network drive on startup with an fstab file. Now, Linux Mint is awesome because it gets you running a good Linux system without uh, having to touch the terminal a lot. But there are times you're going to need to if you want to do some more advanced things. The backup tool, for whatever reason, doesn't allow you to back up to a network drive by default. So we had to go into the terminal because the cool thing on Linux is if you know how to learn the terminal, um, then it is just well beyond powerful. And so that's what we're going to be topic, tapping in that a little bit here, um, a little bit here today. Okay, so here is the Ubuntu forum with the FSTAB um, information. So basically the FSTAB allows you to automatically mount drives on, uh, on the startup. And so this is what we're going to be using to do this. So we're assuming that you have a network drive, which by the way, this should work with a network drive or it should work with a USB key. And if the, the thing is not available when you boot up, it's not a real big deal. You're not going to get a lot of crazy errors all over the place. Um, it just will skip it. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to create a entry into our F stab where you start with the device, the mount point, the file system type, any options, and then you want your password and information there. So this will get you all of the information. So the device is where is the source of that. So that in this case is going to be my NAS drive. The mount point is where you want. Now here's the reason why you uh, why you do this is when you mount a folder in a in the terminal, then it will actually mount the location. It it, it basically mounts it onto a existing system folder. So what I actually did, uh, if I remember correctly, I think I put this into my media and backup folder. So right now, if you look at that media backup, this is actually not there. Um, but what, ha what I need to do is I need to just come up here, hit my backup, and then you'll see that it now mounts in there. Now if I go back over to the file system and I go media and backup, now you'll see that that folder structure is going to that same location, which is the NAS. This is the step that you need to do to make sure the thing communicates. The reason is when you mount this through the terminal structure, which the F stab does, it basically puts the NAS drive into that folder location. So you might need to come in here and turn this on. There's other scripts that you can build to automatically mount that at the system start. It might actually go all the way on its own. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but what happens now is um, we're going to create the fstab file. So I'm going to load up the terminal. Just hold Control, Alt, and push T. And I'm going to do sudo 
Um, for super user, Nano is a text editor I prefer to use. I'm going to use Etsy and FSTAB. Enter your password. I think I, oh, I did get that right. And the important part here is this line. So the top part here is actually already in the system. This is the line that I have added. So what we have here is this is the location of the folder on the NAS drive. This is the location that it is backing up to. This is the file structure, which is CIFS. Now, some distros do not have CIFS. Um, if you happen to have one of those distros, it is sudo apt or apt-get. I'll just do the whole thing because that works everywhere. And this, of course, works for any, any uh, Debian system. And you want to do CIFS dat c-i-f-s dash u-t-i-l-s so this is the command that you want to run if i run it um not a big deal if you do run it it's like hey um that's already done you know we already have the the latest it might, might be that one yeah see it can't access this one it says here that uh that it's already running in the newest versions yeah so i did have that right the first time Okay, so now we're actually going to go back into our FSTAB. Um, now, credentials means that there is a file, and I'm not going to open this file up because that's the one that actually contains the username and the password. Uh, you can actually enter this in, user equals, pass equals, but then you have stuff laying around. Um, but what you do then is you create one file, which is simply set up um, And this file. Let me just show you where that's at. Uh, that's just right in my home, um, in here, in my scripts. Now, these are the various scripts that I've written to fix different things. So this computer has a touch screen, um, but the touch screen on this computer, it's not a Linux thing. It's just a hardware issue. Every now and again, likes to constantly touch itself in the middle top of the screen. People on Windows, Linux, everywhere have reported the problem. So I actually, I created a script to disable the touch screen and then another one to enable it. So if I need the touch screen, I come in here and I just run the touch screen. No big deal. Um, but this is the file that I have. You'll see it's a hidden file. So if I actually am hiding system files, it's not visible. Um, and so I have those turned on just so I can see them for the purpose of the video here. Uh, so basically all this file structure is, is I just came down here. You open a new document, um, and then as this guy's opening up, you simply do user equals uh, my username, whatever your username happens to be. Do a simple enter, and pass equals my password, whatever your password happens to be. Just save it like this. And then, of course, what you want to do is you want to set the permissions to be you know root permissions only so that no one else can access the file. You know, nobody can read it. Nobody can do anything with it. Basically, it sits on your system that if somebody does not have a root access, they can't actually do that. And I actually skipped that step, believe it or not. Um, so I could I could actually come down here in the GUI since I think I still own this file. I'm pretty sure I have. And um, I can just kind of change the settings around. I did actually set it to, you know, groups and anyone else can't access it. So that's a step I didn't do. It is uh, it is optional. It's more secure to do that. But that file there is, uh, it just has my username and my password. So that's what I have, just the location of it. Now you need to enter users. I find that some distros you need to enter this and some of them you don't. You're always safe to enter it. What this does, this users option does, is this will allow a basic system user to mount this, this folder. Otherwise, only root can mount the folder, and you have to have your user able to mount this because the backup program does not run as pseudo privileges. It runs on a user level. So you need to make sure that users is in there, and then you need to end it with this zero space zero. That just tells uh, your options. Uh, that'll I think the options are down here. Uh, basically, what that tells you is we're not going to check these um, it will otherwise it will check the partitions first or whatever else. I just keep those at zero zero because this isn't a, a huge big deal. And so once that line is in the F stab, you have to restart the computer. And as you restart the computer, then you will have the the ability to actually go right into there as a user and enter things in. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and load up my uh, backup tool now. So now with my backup tool loaded up. 
you need to decide what you're going to back up. Uh, here's the restore button to restore. Here's your back it up to back it up. So now you want to select where they're going. Um, this is actually the folder. Um, this would not show up if we did not mount this in the Fs tab. Um, to verify, come up here. You see that it always wants to default to this documents backup. Um, I'm going to hit the other locations on computer. We're going to go media and backup. You'll see here that this is the other backup that I have, and this is just another document. So you see that this whole backup is 14.5. Push open. Now, if you've done this correct, it will let you skip on. If you've not done that correctly, then it will give you an error that you cannot write to that directory. Uh, but since I have put that users in my fstab file, I can now write to the directory. Now, the next thing we want to do is exclude files and directories. I have excluded, you know, these are just files I have laying around that I haven't deleted yet. They're big video files. I don't want them in there. They're just kind of raw video files. Um, I have also excluded a series of things. Um, I've excluded, uh, this was actually put in by the, by the system itself. Um, basically, that means it's not going to make a backup of itself, uh, which is a good thing to do. I've actually left this folder out because it contains some of the raw footage of the home cooking hacks things, and that's about 50 gigabytes itself, and so I didn't want not want to add that. I have excluded the music and the pictures folder because everything in the both of those folders is already on my redundant backup system on the NAS and the uh, offline backups as well, so I have no need to back up music or pictures. And I also excluded the VirtualBox VMs because that's just excessively large, and if they die, I don't really care. I can rebuild them. Hit the forward again. Now, this is the one that I've criticized, and after working with this system, I'm going to withdraw a little of my criticism, just a little. What they should do is explain to you, especially since Mint is targeted to a new user, they should really explain what this means. Because what I did is I went down here and I included these variety of directories which will save all of my settings. So if I do not save any of these settings, like Gourmet for example, this is where I store all my recipes for home cooking hacks. If I lose this .gourmet folder, I lose my database and therefore all of my information. So I, it is imperative that that is inside my database. Okay, um, Linux Mint will save some of the custom system settings I had. Local stores, uh, the two biggest critical ones are .local and .config. Although they are big folders, they are folders you want to save. Right, Katie? Right. Save those two folders, because saving those two folders will save a lot of your system applications. Thank you, Kitty, for that awesome explanation. Um, FileZilla, the .filezilla, this is where all of my stored passwords and such are for my uh, FTP clients that I need for web design, so it's important I save that. Otherwise, I have to go in and rebuild the entire FileZilla. That is a pain. I have like 50 websites in there that will take me a couple of days. Um, and but saving this file allows me to save those options. And of course you do the same, um, you know, there's your Thunderbird, there's your Skype, Scribus. So these are saving the options and the customizations for the individual programs. Go ahead and hit the apply and now it's actually gonna run the backup. I don't want it to run the backup again, I just did one yesterday, but now it is working and as it is making the backup, in fact, I'll show you over here, I'll go into the network now. And I'll go into my Open Media Vault. So this is my main master password that can get in. Actually, I think I might have even blocked the admin out of here. No, I didn't. So this one right here, this is the backup it's trying to do right now. You'll see it's a, the dot part backup. Um, and if it's 1%, it's backing up. I'm going to go ahead and terminate this. So the downside of the backup tool is that you, it does have to be manually run. So you do have to actually call for it. Now nah, we're going to force quit. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this because I don't want that one there. Delete it. Okay. So this is my backup. And so basically what I'm going to do is have a variety of these different folders on my system. Uh, one for each of the major computers that I need to back up. Some of my computers I don't need to run the backups on. Um, but with that running, now I can run my backup tool. 
and I can save my uh, I can save all of my backups to my NAS drive directly rather than saving them to the hard disk here and then moving you know worrying about moving them because understand this once it goes onto my NAS my NAS drive has a redundant RAID system so there's two hard drives that are mirror images if one of them fails the other one still is good and it has a a, um, a backup R sync that. You know, once a month or once every other week, whenever there's major adjustments made to the system, I can plug in an external USB drive and it will actually go ahead and um, make a copy of the entire system on a completely offline system. So this is the best option. It allows you to F-stab, mount the folder, uh, load the folder up, and then... Um, uh, load the folder up and then it will allow you to run your backup program directly onto your NAS or network drive. That same exact approach should work with a USB drive as well. So if you have a USB drive you want to back it up, uh, back up to, um, you can do that. Um, you know, you can just have that USB drive in the computer at start. It should mount to that USB drive and then you can run your backup, pull your drive out and then have a offline uh, backup drive on, a, on the USB drive as well. So that is how to do that. Um, maybe some other questions, maybe someone might ask, is that gonna work on time shift? My guess is it probably will work on time shift as well. Um, I don't actually have time shift installed on this computer and basically time shift allows you to go back to a uh, the system. So, so here's kind of your backup, uh, your, your philosophy. The backup tool backs up just your personal files, not the system. Time shift backs up your system, not your personal files. In Linux, I don't care as much to have my personal my system backed up as long as I have my personal files backed up and the configurations for my individual programs. That's what is important to me. So once that those are all backed up, I'm very happy with that. Um, however, if you do need that, if uh, TimeShift is very good, if you're developing a, a site, you know there are good applications for it. I'm not saying it's a useless program. It's one that does not necessarily fit with everything that I want to do. So hopefully that helps you to back up your uh, your files to a NAS drive or a USB key. Make sure you have a very good uh, detailed backup plan in place and follow that backup plan so that you do not lose your data. So thank you for watching. If you would like to help support what we are doing, you can um, check us out at switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Um, I have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M, and there's an Amazon link down below. If you do any shopping on Amazon, you want to uh, use that affiliate store. That uh, does not cost you anything else, but Amazon will send me a tip for sending things your way. With that being said, here's a picture of a cute kitty. Wait, bye byes Bye bye, peoples. <laughs> Have yourself a wonderful day, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.